Hi guys, what are we gonna do today? We're gonna make this really cool book. Just a couple items that I had that I used and we came up with this. Let's get started. So the two main ingredients in this project are a music scroll and an old book that you do not mind cutting the pages out of. So I'm gonna use this really nice size book. So the scrolls are 11 and a quarter inches long. So unless you're planning to cut the whole thing, um, you're gonna to wanna to find a book that's that size. And this happens to be 11. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is cut out your pages. I am just using an X-Acto. I just slice. I don't wanna cut through the back binding, but I want this and see how that just came off. And let's do the same with the other side. Since they use this one front page, they use this page to attach to the covers and then it attaches to all your signatures inside. So you wanna be careful not to try to cut your spine. So all my pages are out and I have got my cover. I love using these cut down and then you have great triangles for buntings and garlands. Or you can use your paper for whatever you would like. So after you've cut your pages out, well, you wanna make sure you take all your stickers off and anything else that might be stuck to the front of this. And I find that if you use a heat gun or a hair dryer, that really helps get any other stickers or labels off of your book. What I did next, I just used a chalk paint, but you could use any paint that you would like. A couple layers of paint, a base coat on the inside and on the outside. A lot of it will be covered anyway, but I just want a really nice surface to start working. Okay, here is your music scroll. I won't be using this piece. We're gonna take this edge and cut this off to start. So I'm just using this book cover that is the exact same size and I am using it just for a guide. And I'm folding it over and all I'm gonna do is a fan fold. So you actually could use the cover all the way through or you can just use your initial guide and just fan fold it. And every so often, maybe just put the book cover in to make sure that you're still on track. So after you've got it started, you're gonna notice that your roll is gonna to wanna to pull. So the easiest way to do this is after you've started it, unroll your spools and I take the end of the spool off of the paper. So after I took it off of my spool, um, if you have something like this, a dowel or something or a paper towel holder, that also works really well because then you can just roll it out as you need it. Now I am just gonna to continue to fan fold this whole piece until we get to the end or however big you would like your book to be. So now that you've had it all folded, I'll turn it over and start at the other side. And now I'm going to start gluing the edges of my pages together. I'm using my extra heavy duty glue stick. And if you wanted to, you could actually just iron this flat and it would probably help it also. I'm just doing these three ends just enough Hold it in place. Okay, it looks like we have all of our sections, I'm going to double check here, have been glued together. Make sure none of the excess glue is sticking to other pages. So when all your pages are glued together, we are going to put them into the book. Okay, so I have all my pages glued together and here is going to be the spine edge. 
Here is the book that we painted and dried. I'm going to set this book inside of here. You want your pages facing out and you want the spine towards the spine. I did find, I know your first instinct would be to glue the front and back pages, but what'll happen is it'll pull and rip it. So I do that at the very end. And I am using this heavy cording. It is like a cotton fiber twine. So I start at the outside and go around the spine. I am going to go into my first page. I'm gonna give myself a little extra here. And then I'm gonna try the first one into a knot at the bottom here. And you want to be careful because you don't want to rip your pages and your pages are very fragile. So I'm just going to knot this. So you want, you want it to be secure, but not super, super, super tight. Now this extra piece to wrap this up, put some tape on it and get it out of your way. So I'm going to be using this later. So I'm just going to wrap it up with some tape and just let it dangle. So I went around the spine again, going through that page, bringing it around the spine again, going through the next page. Turn the page, go around the spine again. You want it to be taut, but you don't want it to be so tight that you're ripping all your pages. It is gonna happen some, but that's, and that's okay. This paper is very fragile. So I'm going to continue this on until I have all of my pages done. So I've gotten through all of these. I had about, oh, maybe two feet that I left. And I am going to go up here and leave two feet on the other side also and just tie this. So what I did is I am just wrapping, bringing these two ends underneath. One under here, over here, the one on the left to the right, and just wrapping it around so you're making X's over and under. So just keep doing this till you get to the end. I did several knots and I'm just leaving this. So I'm using a heavy duty double stick tape and I am pressing this into the center carefully over the cording so it is on both pages. And this is really just to reinforce the pages. Now you can use whatever fiber you would like. I really like sari silk. I think some sort of a trim or something that's a little bit wider. And I'm having it hang out off the top because I like the way that looks and even hang off the bottom slightly. And so this is reinforcing my pages together. Just separated them and separated this fabric a little bit and just lay it on the crease of that. And now there's a little more stability in there because it's attached to both pieces. And I'm gonna continue on and do this. When you put it right over the cording and go right here in between there, it helps hold them together. And you're also gonna notice the closer you get to the end, it's gonna get thicker. So you can see you're getting closer to the end. And so when you pull this down, you wanna be careful you don't rip it, but it's getting tighter on this side. You just wanna be careful when you're pressing down so you don't rip your pages, but you wanna make sure you're still getting in between the two pages and covering that cording. I thought about using glue for this, but my one hesitation was if the glue seeps through, it was gonna glue all the other pages together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, so I'm gonna attach the front page into the inside of the front cover and attach the back page to the inside of the back cover. I am going to use a decoupage medium for that. I could use this tape, 
but it's so stiff and strong. What would happen is when you open and close the book, you may rip it. If I get the decoupage medium in there and open and shut it, it's gonna have a little bit of a gibbs without it ripping. So I'm just using a Mod Podge, and what I am gonna do is just put it on the back of the inside of this book. Okay, let's just lay this down. And since I put the glue on the book, it's getting the back sheet, but it's not, I didn't put it onto the back of the paper, so it's not saturating through both sheets right away. Okay, let's do this side now. And that looks like it's gonna shut nicely and open nicely. Okay, so we have those glued in. There are some other fun little things we could do before we start to decorate. On a lot of these, I just kind of carefully rip some of these pieces. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna start decorating my cover. I'm gonna be using a heavier weight decoupage, some of my thinner weight decoupage, and then I'm also gonna be using some transfer pieces and stamps. So I'm gonna be combining them all. I want my edges ripped, but I think for this piece, I want, I'm gonna cut this because I want to use the bottom for something else on the inside. I want this edge to look torn, so I'm just putting water on my brush, and I am just gonna go around the outside edge. When the paper is thicker like this, it takes a little more saturation. Thinner weight tissue paper rips very, very easily. So what I'm doing here is I cut this, and I don't want it to be an abrupt straight line, so I'm just going along the edge. And I've noticed on this type of a paper that the top is kind of coated because of the ink, so if you get it wet from the back, it seems to saturate really well. And I am not having to look where I'm going, I know I'm just going on the edge. And what's nice is I can just pull little bits. And you can use any type of a decoupage medium you like, I'm just using Mod Podge, and this for this project, this works just fine. So I'm gonna be using mostly browns on this, lighter colors, so I don't have a real sharp definition. I want it to all look muted. So I'm just doing a little bit of crackle and just a little hit and miss. It doesn't have to be everywhere, and some of this is gonna be covered up anyway. These are part of some of my new florals from IOD. So we did some paper and some decoupage and added some transfers, and you could add as much or as little as you'd like. So let's just seal the outside of this book. I'm using some clear wax and dark wax. So now when I put the wax on here, you can see how it makes my cording look kind of cool. And if I would have used just clear wax first, it wouldn't have gotten as dark. But I kind of like that. So on the front of this page, I'm just gonna stamp a couple florals, add a little piece of decoupage and make this page real simple. And I'll just show you some of the other things that we had already done. So these stamps are, are nice and open and I'm using a brown instead of a black so that it feels like I could still journal or write into it. So if you use your mash, you could really overlay quite a few of these pieces. I'm just kind of eyeballing because I want my paper to go around just like this. Okay, 
so I just put my Mod Podge on the tissue paper after I had cut it out and I am laying it down. I'm gonna have to just get the wrinkles out. And then in here we did some stamping, added some transfers. So I'm combining some different looks and here I had decoupage. It's in lighter colors, so if I wanted to write on this, I can. And even with these large florals, I could write words in between. It does have a lot of open space that you could add into. Okay guys, I hope this has given you some ideas. I hope you give us a try. It's not a fast project, but it's very, very satisfying when you get to play with each page and do fun things. And I hope you guys try this, but whatever you do, have fun.